Hi there, I'm Alastair Kennedy and I'm the Sociable Social Worker and I give practical advice to social workers, social work students, newly qualified social workers and those wanting to foster and adopt. God, that's a mouthful. It's getting longer and longer every time. In this video, what I'm going to do is a bit of a change. I'm going to talk to you about home visits during COVID-19 and just home visits in general. So today what I'm going to do is do this introduction and then we're going to go out on a home visit. But although we can't do the home visit in its full entirety because obviously of confidentiality, I have to drop off a letter to a family today which is going to have a particularly difficult message. But before I go out on any visit, I always work through this checklist. Don't worry about writing it all down, I'll put timestamps on it and I'll leave you a list below. So before I go out on any visits, I do, do I really need to do this visit? Do I really need to do this visit in COVID? This one today, I need to do it face to face, I can't do it for your video. Do I need to go with a colleague? Is it safe to go on my own? Should I take someone as backup? Did I sign out? So have you got a board? Now at home, my wife's a nurse and she's a community nurse. Obviously I work in the community as well as a social worker and we've got a little whiteboard and even we write on it where we're going, when we'll be back and we text each other when we're going in and out of houses just to make sure that we're safe because obviously you're not at home. Now I know some local authorities, some agencies have safety protocols so you need to read those as well. Another point is have you actually spoken to the client and about who's going to be in the house with them? Also have you completed your risk assessment if you need to do one? Check that they've had a letter that's really important so that they know that you're coming. Um, talk to them about PPE. Ask them, has anybody got any symptoms, coughs, colds, sneezes, that kind of thing about COVID-19. Ask them if anybody's self-isolating in the house and if so, how are they managing it? Is there anyone in the home that is shielding? That's really important because that might have an effect on you just can't do the visit whatsoever. Uh, has anyone got hearing difficulties? Is there any impairments? And you need to explain about social distancing, don't you? So even when you go to the front door, and it may be that when you go to the front door, you just have to stay at the front door. Let's face it, they might not let you in for a start. Also, make the person aware that you're going to be wearing PPE and exactly explain what you'll be wearing and kind of the mask you'll be wearing as well. I've got a mask and I'll show you it when I get into the car. <laughs> it's got a visor on it and you can actually see my mouth. But I'll show you when I get into the car. So I'm outside the client's house and had a good drive here. It's locked down, so easy, quite a quick drive, which is quite good. But what I always do when I'm out on a home visit is I always do a drive by first of the house or where I'm going to be. And if you remember from some of my other videos, I always talk about situational awareness. You know, who's in the street? Is the driveway dark? Are there lights on if it's night time? Who's about? Um, can you see people in the window? So it's important to do a drive by first. PPE. Now I'm not going to go into great detail about PPE but what I would say to you is look at Social Work England's advice on PPE and there's a risk assessment on the Social Work England website but there has a great selection of PPE for you to wear but remember it does hinder communication so when you're at the front door of people you probably need to repeat yourself a couple of times just for your PPE. I did just buy these new masks off Amazon I think they were like eight quid for about five of them and they have a see-through bit. Look Oh, see through. The only thing about these is, is they steam up. But the good thing about them as well is, is that people can see you smiling. As well as my mask, I have this, the Riot Shield Protector. But it's useful if you want to take it. Another thing I have, massive set of wipes, disinfecting wipes, loads of alcohol in them. And this is what I call my COVID jacket. So what I tend to do is I wear this to home visits and then when I get in to the car and what I do is I have a canvas bag like this and it's got all I put my jacket in it if I've got a jumper I put that in it and then when I get home actually what I do is I then wash the clothes that I'm in at the back door it was like Santa's sack this when you go to park your car don't park across driveways don't park in driveways, especially not in driveways, because then people can block you in. Always park under a light as well, which is really important. And what I do always is park away from the house if I can, and then walk to the house at least a couple of minutes away. Obviously, have your mobile with you. 
Um, some people carry two mobiles, I just carry one mobile. Some people have a little emergency mobile that they carry, we Nokia, we old Nokia. Never take confidential material into a client's house. I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube from other social workers that say, yeah, yeah, go in with my pile of papers. No, you don't need to. You've got your phone, you've got emails. That's all you need. So that was the home visit finished. It kind of went okay. It was a bit difficult in places. I had to remember that there was only so much I could talk to them about. Some of the details were quite difficult because it came from their own children and the children don't want confidential information. They don't want it disclosed. So it was quite a difficult conversation we had to have. But I did it, I remembered the key things. Open communication, didn't ask closed questions and kind of explain things quite slowly and simply and what the next process would be, you know. And I feel they came away with it feeling okay that it ended positively. And that's, that's all you can ask, isn't it? That's all you can ask.